absolutely incredible. We are in the actual submarine that was sailed in 1986 by the, the Deep Waters community from Coromandel. We've come down here to the Antarctic. This is it. This is the submarine. This is where it all happened. This, this is one of the great untold stories of New Zealand. New Zealand protest, New Zealand maritime disasters. Hardly anyone knows that this happened. And this is why I want to tell this story. This is the great Kiwi story. In the submarine in 1986, nine or 10 people died. We're gonna make a feature film about it, hopefully. We got given $3,000 uh, uh, development money from the Film Commission, God bless them. And we blew it all. Coming down here, we're, we're piggybacking on, on an expedition that the uh, Canterbury University was, uh, was having as a, a maritime archaeological expedition. We're here. I'm not allowed to touch anything. It's a, this side is tapu because there are, there are dead bodies here. Uh, but the amazing thing is, so we get, to, we get to look around and we get to we'll do some research for our future film, which, which hopefully we'll, we'll make. So let's have a look around and see what, see what we can find. This is just incredible. It's unbelievable. Everything, everything is exactly as it was left 25 years ago. It's all perfectly preserved. Absolutely amazing. Post on the wall. Have a look around. I wrote my uh, PhD thesis on the history of protest in New Zealand. Um, Norman Kirk, he sent uh, frigates to Muroa, and this, this great history of protest in New Zealand continues right up today with uh, the Christian anarchists who deflated the spy dome at Waihopai. One of the chapters in my thesis is on the deep waters community here, and um, they were aware of, uh, of how they fitted into this history. So uh, looking around their walls, they've got, uh, they've got posters of, uh, of David Longy at Oxford, they've got the, um, the Rainbow Warrior, um, Bastion Point in the late 70s, uh, obviously Springbok Tour and protests against the US um, frigates. And the, the Deep Waters community is an important part of that story that needs to be told. <sighs> the movie that we're making is, is going to be a, a psychological thriller. It's going to be damn scary and I have to tell you, <laughs> It's just damn scary being here because this place this gives me the creeps. You hear the, you hear the creaky sounds. God, it's like some kind of like haunted, haunted castle thing. Um, so you've got to imagine in the movie what it would be like, but also what it was actually like for these, these actual people. We, we don't know what happened, of course, but what we think happened was that the, the engine stopped, so they would have lost light, they would have lost heat, it would have been freezing cold, um, and then presumably one by one, they would have started dying, I guess. But we've got, we're not allowed to touch things, but I just want to show you this, we've got, we do have body. It's just freaky, so the cold, um, and the fact that they were trapped essentially in this in this tomb at the bottom of the bottom of the sea, they couldn't escape, um, is just it's unbelievably scary. It would have been terrifying for them, and so hopefully we'll make a really good terrifying movie as well. <clears throat> to me. This story raises questions about human nature. Are people basically good? Or do we have some kind of inclination to evil? Or is it just that ordinary people do extraordinary things in a life and death situation in order to survive? One of the questions that this film raises is about whether or not protest is successful or not. Now, it may seem like it was a failure because they, they all died, but here's the thing. The Japanese lost one of the whaling ships in February 1986. Now, it might have been because it was uh, sunk by the torpedo, we don't know. However, a couple of months later, the Japanese signed the moratorium on whaling and they ended commercial fishing of whales. 
They went from killing 2,000 whales a year to only killing 200. Now, it may well be that this was a result of the actions of the deep waters community. Now, if that's true, then these guys are one of the great unsung heroes of New Zealand.